this message today is both national and personal. And it goes from severity to love. From judgment to forgiveness. From death to life. Our God has made laws. They're immutable. But he also is a God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Mercy and grace. Yes. Behold the goodness and the severity of God, the apostle said. Let's turn to Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 10. We're going to see an example of the severity of the law. The severity of the law. And this was God's law. Yes. Leviticus 20 and verse 10. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Amen. Then in Le uh, Deuteronomy 22, 22. If a man be found lying with a woman, married to an husband, then they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from Israel. Amen. Now concerning the national aspect of this message, we know that the Lord our God married his people Israel at Mount Sinai in 1453 B.C. And he married the whole nation. Yes. Exodus 24, that was the marriage ceremony. So the Lord became a husband. And Israel became his wife. Yes. But that wife, being very unfaithful, mm -hmm. of which we've already read about this morning, but when we come to the book of Jeremiah and we read words such as this in Jeremiah chapter 2 we read these words Jeremiah 2 chapter chapter 2 verse 20 For of old I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou sayest, I will not transgress. When upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest playing the harlot. Playing the harlot in this context, in this national context that Jeremiah is speaking, is that they have lost their faithfulness to one husband. Israel lost her faithfulness to her one husband, yes. Jehovah, and began to entangle herself, have relations, so to speak, with other nations, with other gods. And all gods are pagan except Jehovah God. Amen. All gods are false, whether they be gods of wood, or stone, or concepts, or ideas such as all those that were in the Old Testament, <clears throat> in the Old Testament, listed as pagans. And she began to join herself 
unto all these. Also, we read in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1. This is the Lord's description of his wife. <clears throat> Excuse me. They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? Those are questions. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. And then here comes the love of God. Yet return again unto me, saith the Lord. Amen. And then in verse number six. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She is gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And then in verse 8, And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce, Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot. Now let's go back to Numbers chapter 5. Numbers chapter 5 is where we see this rather strange law, this strange event that takes place under the authority of the priest. And it's concerning a test of jealousy. Yes. When a husband becomes jealous of his wife and suspects that she is unfaithful to him, but he does not have the evidence. He doesn't know for sure. But he's just suspicious. So there was a, a process, a trial that was held for this woman. And beginning in verse number 11, Numbers chapter 5. And I'm going to read and comment from verse 11 all the way down to 31. And this is the process by which it was determined whether this woman was guilty of adultery or not. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. And say unto them, If any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him, and the man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept close, in other words, a secret, and she be defiled, and there be no witness against her, neither she be taken with the manner. In other words, she's not showing and the spirit of jealousy come upon the husband, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled. She's innocent. This is the process. Then shall the man bring his wife Unto the priest. This chair represents the wife before the priest and the husband. Then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her. The tenth part of an ephod of barley meal. And he shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon, for it, is it, for it is an offering of jealousy. Now he takes this container, which 
represented by this bowl. And the offering that he puts in this is equivalent to about one gallon. The tenth part of an ephod of barley meal, not wheat, but barley, for poor, uh, the poor people. And do not put any oil in it. Do not sweeten it. Don't put any frankincense in it. Because it's an offering of jealousy. An offering of memorial. Bringing iniquity to remembrance or exposing iniquity. But the husband was required to bring the offering. Why? He's the head of the wife. Yep. He's responsible for her. So therefore, she did not bring the offering, but he furnished the offering. Because he's the head of the household. And she belongs to him. She's not her own. She belongs to that husband. Therefore, come the time of the trial, he's the one that's responsible to bring an offering. Verse number 16. And the priest shall bring her near, and set her before the Lord. So here's the woman in this chair. Now in this trial, we have the woman. We have her husband. We have the priest. And now we have the Lord. Yes. Now this is getting scary. She's going to be exposed to her husband, the priest, and the Lord. Whether she is guilty or not guilty. Verse 17. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel. Now here's a separate vessel that the priest has. The priest shall take holy water, and that was taken from the labor that was consecrated. Yes. The water in the labor, holy water, represented washing, yes. cleanliness, purity, for the priest could go and wash. And the labor was made, the bottom of the labor on the inside was made and polished as a mirror. So the priest could look in there and see if there was any dirt or blood on his face. And this water was pure. It was clean. So he puts it in this bowl, in this vessel. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle. The priest, they're in the tabernacle. The priest stoops down and he gets some dirt off the floor and he puts it in the water. Now this water is no longer pure. This, this dust represents uncleanness. This dust represents <coughs> a person that was once known as innocent, but now could be exposed as being guilty. He got some dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle and he put it into the water. Now the water is unclean. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord. 
and uncover her head. Now, no doubt that was a physical uncovering. Take off your, your covering off your head. But this is what it really means. Husband, you are no longer her head. She's under my authority now. The priest says, she's under my authority. Because you brought her here. You furnished the offering. But now this second bowl that once represented cleanliness now represents uncleanness, mm -hmm. unholy. So you are under my head, the priest says. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head and put the offering of memorial, the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. So the, so the first offering, the woman's going to hold it. <coughs> and the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. Mm -hmm. This container. And the priest shall charge her by an oath and say unto her, If no man have lain with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from the bitter water that causes the curse. Mm -hmm. But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, and if thou be defiled, and some man have lain with thee beside thine husband. Then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse and an oath among thy people. When the Lord doth make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell. And this water that causes the curse shall go into thy bowels and make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. And the woman says, okay, I agree. Amen. Amen. Now she is under oath. Just like Israel was under oath in Exodus 24. Now she's under oath. And the priest shall write these curses in a book. So he takes out his writing instrument, and here's this book that he's writing, and he writes this curse. Woman, if you are guilty, your belly is going to swell and your thigh is going to rot, which translates your reproductive organs are going to die. You're not going to be able to have children. And the priest shall write these curses in a book. And he shall blot them out with the bitter water. Somehow, he took this written curse and he put it in the water. Now, there's a bowl or a vessel with once pure water, then the desecration of dust off the floor of the tabernacle. And now there's a curse in that water. She's going to drink it. Twenty-four. 
And he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causes the curse. And the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. I would imagine so. What's going through her mind? Now, she had to agree mm -hmm. to this curse, mm -hmm. yeah. whether she's guilty or not. She knows within herself whether she was guilty or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. But here she is on trial, knowing the consequences if she's guilty. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand and wave it before the Lord. Now her offering is given unto the Lord. He shall wave the offering before the Lord and offer it upon the altar. That sanctifies this whole process. That certifies this whole process. Now you've actually given something to the Lord that her husband brought. And now she is definitely, definitely on the hot seat. Because in this, there's a curse. In this water, there's a curse. In this offering of barley, she lifts it up, or the priest lifts it up to the Lord. And then takes it and burns it upon the altar. Once it's burnt, you can't take it back. In other words, this offering is saying, this is final. Mm -hmm. This is final. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who are the parties in this? Her husband, mm -hmm. the woman, the priest, and now the Lord. Mm -hmm. And her vow, mm -hmm. her recognition, that I'm going to take this, drink this water. And this offering of barley meal has been offered unto the God of heaven. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Twenty-six. And the priest shall take a handful of the offering, even the memorial offering. Why is it called a memorial offering here? Or an offering of remembrance. Because if this woman is guilty, this shall stand as a memorial to her. Everybody that sees her is going to know that woman was guilty. Now, looking back over the law of God without reading any more than what we just read out of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, God hates adultery. He hates it. And the priest shall take a handful of the offering, even the memorial offering, and burn it upon the altar, and afterward shall cause the woman to drink the water. So he offers this vessel to this woman, says, drink it. Drink it. And when he hath made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled and have done trespass against her husband, that the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter, and her belly 
shall swell and her thigh shall rot. And the woman shall be a curse among her people. Everybody will know this woman was guilty. An offering of memorial. That will be her legacy in the community. And if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed. Mm -hmm. She can bear children. Yes. This is the law of jealousy. Mm -hmm. When a wife goeth aside to another instead of her husband and is defiled. Or when the spirit of jealousy cometh upon him and be not and be jealous over his wife and shall set the woman before the Lord and the priest shall execute upon her all this law. The Lord himself in the book of Exodus said, I am jealous for my people. In fact, my name is jealous. My name is jealous. And he became suspicious with evidence that national Israel played the harlot. Amen. No doubt about it. And he says, I must divorce this woman. Amen. So in 721, when the Assyrians came down, they took the people of Israel into captivity. Israel was now in a divorce state. Because God is a God of jealousy over his people. Amen. And when he instituted marriage on the personal level, he says, this woman and this man are now one. And the man, the husband, is the head of the wife. Amen. God made some pretty stringent laws. Yes. You just don't go outside of marriage. Amen. Amen. Thank God. I'm going to read 30. Or when the spirit of jealousy cometh upon him, and he be jealous over his wife, and shall set the woman before the Lord, and the priest shall execute upon all upon her all this law. Then shall the man be guiltless from iniquity, and this woman shall bear her iniquity if she's guilty. Once again, remember. The parties in this trial. The husband. The wife. The priest. And the Lord himself. Four parties. And this vow has been made. And she has sworn to this vow. The woman swore to this vow. If I'm guilty, I know that I shall never bear children. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we seal it mm -hmm. with this offering made unto the Lord. And then it's burnt upon the altar, which, in other words, you can't get it back. Once it's done and offered to the Lord, that's it. You're now in his court. In the court of justice of the Almighty. Let's go to the book of John. That story 
in numbers sounds rather harsh rather absolute now let's come to John chapter 8 Jesus went into the Mount of Olives verse 1 and early in the morning he came into the temple now he's in Solomon's temple he, he Jesus was never allowed to go into the holy place or the most holy place. He was on Solomon's porch where all the people gathered. So he's in the temple. And all the people came unto him and he sat down and began to teach them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said, now, master or priest, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. We know that she was guilty. There's no question about it. This woman is guilty. Now, Moses, in the law, that's what we read. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what are you going to say about it? Now these tricky lawyers, they were out to catch him in his own words. This they said, tempting him that they might have reason to accuse him. This is what Jesus did. Following the pattern of the priest in the Old Testament, he knelt down on the temple floor and he began to write. Now, I've heard it said by preachers, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jesus what he wrote in the dust. We know what he wrote. Amen. Amen. Yep. Hallelujah. Guilty. Yes. That's what he wrote. Yes. And the sentence is death for this woman. That's what he wrote. That's what the priest wrote in the Old Testament. Verse 6, this they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he didn't hear him. So when they continued asking him, Master, what do you say to this woman? What is your verdict concerning this guilty woman? He lifted up himself and he said unto them as he was getting up off the floor he said, now wait a minute. He that is without sin you pick up the first rock and you throw it at this woman. This woman, it was a personal story, yes. but this woman represents national Israel. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees that came to him, they represented the Judah nation yes. that looked upon the northern house as being guilty mm -hmm. of adultery right. and divorce. Yeah. Definitely guilty. National Israel, definitely guilty. This woman, definitely guilty. But he said, if you're without sin. Now, Jeremiah said that we read that Israel <clears throat> committed adultery 
And then he went on to say, her sister Judah yes. also committed adultery. Amen. So Jesus is saying, you house, your house, your nation, your Judaism, you're guilty also of adultery. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. <laughs> he wrote on the ground the second time. What was he writing? <laughs> Judah, you're guilty. Yes. You're guilty of adultery. And I'll tell you what your curse is. Your house is going to be left unto you desolate. And see this temple? There's not one stone going to be left upon another that's not thrown down. Because where the body is, the dead body, the vultures are going to come. That's the Roman army. Yeah. Yeah. And in 38 years, I'm going to tear this place down. You're guilty of adultery. And possibly the very men that were standing there in their self-righteous robes yes. Yes. were guilty. And when they heard that, they which heard it being convicted in their own conscience went out. And I'm going to change that word went out to snuck out. <laughs> one by one. Beginning at the eldest until the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. Now who's at this scene in John 8? Who are the parties involved? There was the woman. There was Jesus. These Pharisees. Where's her husband? She being representing national Israel, Jesus was the husband. You follow me? Amen. Here's the woman. Here's national Israel. Jesus is the husband. It's his responsibility to bring an offering. When did he do it? When he was on the cross, yeah. he brought an offering. So he was a faithful husband. Yes. Remember Jeremiah 3 1? If a woman go out and be unfaithful to her husband, shall he come, shall she come back to him? And then that last phrase is return, O Israel, yes. unto me. See, there was mercy Amen. even in the message of the prophet. So we have the woman. We have Jesus as her husband. And Jesus is the priest in this case. He is the one that's conducting the trial. Just like the priest in the Old Testament. Verse 10, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, these are the sweetest words that ever yes. came across the lips of our Savior. Yeah. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. 
mercy. Yes. Rewrote this woman's life. Amen. The grace of God. She was guilty. Yes. Now we have the woman. Jesus is the husband. Jesus is the priest. And Jesus is God. Amen. Whose offering was received. Amen. Because Jesus is not God number two in the New yeah. Testament. He's the same God as the Old Testament Amen. that married Israel in 1453. Amen. And he's the priest yes. that offered the sacrifice. Yes. And he's also the husband yeah. that brought the offering. And he's the God that could forgive sin Amen. and say, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. <laughs> Grace. Yes. Mercy. So he says to national Israel, return unto me. You've been filthy. You've played the harlot. You've done everything that I told you not to do. But return unto me. And he could say, neither do I condemn thee. Amen. Go and sin no more. Amen. I brought an offering for you. I'm your husband. I'm your high priest. I'm your God. Amen. This woman guilty, yeah. caught in the very act, yeah. worthy of death. Yeah. That's what Moses said. Yes. But Jesus steps forward and says, yes, you're guilty according to the law, but according to the law of mercy, Amen. you're forgiven. Hallelujah. You're clean. Thank God. Go ahead. Go and sin no more. Amen. That's our God. Yes. Amen. That's our Savior. That's the one that brought the offering. He gave his all. He gave his all. Not just a barley, bowl of barley. Yeah. He gave his life. Amen. He shed his blood Amen. to redeem, to bring back. Amen. Yes. And really, if you're guilty, not just of adultery, but whatever that sin is, mm -hmm. those words are still ringing That's right. throughout Amen. the vibrations mm -hmm. from Palestine yeah. to now or wherever you may be. Mm -hmm. Neither do I condemn thee. Hallelujah. Admit your guilt. Yes. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Mm -hmm. That grace mm -hmm. is still abundant. Yes, mm -hmm. amen. Mercy yes. rewrote this woman's life. For years I traveled our road all wrong my heart had lost its joy and its song then grace placed me
stand together. We're that woman. Yep. Amen. Amen. We stand guilty. We're that woman. Yes. Stray from the fold of God. Live a life of sin. Iniquity, yep. rebellion, yeah. guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And in the law, we're worthy of death. Amen. Guess what? Yeah. Neither do I condemn Guilty. thee. Amen. Go and sin no more. Mercy yeah. rewrote our life. Yeah. Mercy. Sing it again, Lynn. Well, we'll help her on the court.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mercy. <laughs> grace and Amen. grace alone. Amen. Amen. No works. Amen. Right. Amen. No offerings. Yes. yes. No processionals. No Hallelujah. flags. Hallelujah. No penance. Amen. Amen. Mercy. Amen. Thank God for his mercy. Yes. Mercy is when you don't get the penalty that you deserve. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I think it's time to thank the Lord. Amen. For his mercy. Just raise your hand. Yes, Lord. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. For your mercy. Undeserved. But you're speaking those words yet today. Neither do I condemn thee. You're speaking those words today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Your grace. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Does anyone have any Thank you say before we're dismissed. I'd like to say something about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. I ain't worked since the end of August. But the Lord provides. <laughs> and just a few weeks ago, unexpectedly, the Lord showered me with some financial blessings. Wow. Amen. <laughs> I thank the Lord for that. Amen. 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 He, he takes care of us. Yes. Amen. 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 I trust the Lord. I always have. Amen. He always took care of me and my Amen. wife. And, and he's going to continue to. Amen. 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 Well, if I don't work the rest of the year, so what? <laughs> the Lord's going to take care of us. Yeah. Amen. 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 I believe that. Amen. 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 Amen.